Soyuz so use and Crew Dragon, I'm sure he will play an astounding role based on past experiences. Experiments on the ISS are expected, expected to contribute to the advancement of people's lives on Earth. Both protein crystal growth experiments in microgravity environment may lead to the development of new medicine. Japanese private companies are also getting to the, use the experiment module keyboard for the initiatives. We expect that we will uh, run the utilization of Kibo. Thank you. Thank you. And, and last question, um, looking a little bit towards the future, um, I know recently Japan, along with uh, seven other countries, including the United States, recently signed the Artemis Accords. Can you tell us a little bit about, more about the Artemis Accords and what that means for future space exploration? Well, uh, in last month in October, the Japanese government signed the Artemis Accords, representing the strong partnership as one of the first countries to join in the future international space exploration. Well, I think Japan has expertise in human and robotic space technologies accumulated through our experience with CCTV and Hayabusa 2. And uh, we continue to move forward with technical considerations with NASA and other international partners. In addition to the field of human space flight, we will continue and deepen our uh, cooperation with NASA and our international partners in order to explore the new era of space and, co and contribution to our society on, on Earth. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much. And, and, uh, and um, arigato gozaimashita. Um, thank you for your time this morning. And arigato I'll pass gozaimashita. It back thank to you, you much. Thank you. In fact. All right. So we just took a look at numbers across all of our social channels, and there are over half a million people tuning into this broadcast right now. And the hashtag Launch America is trending at number 20 on Twitter. Last time we checked. And Marie, Kate, Nicole, I've got some great photos rolling in, and I have a few that I just have to share right now. So take a look at this first one. We've got this little explorer asking if there's room for one more on the mission. Aww. I love it. <laughs> I know. Take, let's go to the next one. We've seen so many cute space pups today, and this corgi and its little NASA onesie is just the icing on the cake. Yes. I can't get enough space dogs, so. <laughs> Um, okay, let's go next. How incredible is this little patriotic astronaut holding the flag? Now, y'all, this one definitely made me pretty emotional on the first time I saw. Yeah. Okay, last one. Check out how awesome Kiana looks in her blue flight, flight suit. And, I mean, wishing her hero, Victor Glover, well on his Launch America mission. So... You've seen it there, and for those of you at home, thank you for sharing a piece of what this mission means to you with us. And in these final moments, let's check in with Shaniqua at Mission Control in Houston. Shaniqua, what's the latest? Thanks, Tahira. The space station team here in Houston is focused, and critical systems on the station continue to function normally. The teams have verified the command path from the ground up through the constellation of communication satellites to the station. Everything is nominal, and the station will be ready to receive Dragon tomorrow. NASA Flight Director Anthony Varia has been leading the operations planning between the joint NASA and SpaceX teams for the Crew-1 mission. And with the mission about to begin, he passed along this to the teams. No matter the spacecraft, our jobs remain the same. We will protect the crew, we will protect the vehicle, and we will perform our mission. We remain tough and competent. We operate with resilience. Anthony and team are on console here in Mission Control for launch and will be back tomorrow for docking. A reminder that a launch today will take about 27 and a half hours to get to station. Docking Monday to the Node 2 Ford port scheduled at 10 p.m. Central Time, 4 a.m. GMT. Once Dragon is fully docked to the station, the team here in Houston will assist the Dragon and SpaceX station, excuse me, space station astronauts with leak checks as they work to open hatches on both Dragon and inside the, pressure, the station's pressurized mating adapter. We expect hatch open to take approximately two hours to take place approximately two hours after docking. That's it for us here in Mission Control Houston. I'll send it back over to the team in Florida. Marie. 
All right, thank you so much, Shaniqua. Uh, we are inside of uh, T minus 19 minutes until launch. Uh, so exciting, we started the day with 50% uh, probability of launch and now we're up to 80% uh, chance of the weather cooperating. So we are so excited. Uh, I know we're gonna be turning our attention uh, solely to the pad and going over to Hawthorne to take us through the final count. But um, one thing that really stuck out to me earlier and I wanted to mention when Shannon was talking about her path to becoming an astronaut. She talked about how she was four years old when she decided that that's what I want to do. And it really stuck out to me because my four-year-old daughter is watching and she's yeah. dreaming about becoming an astronaut. And it's so special for, I, I think especially for little girls, maybe I'm biased, but to be able to have a role model like Shannon and like you, Nicole, um, because at the time when Shannon was four years old, women weren't astronauts. Yeah. Um, and what an amazing time to be in when uh, little girls have women to look up to um, and African-American children have Victor Glover to look up to and see that, you know, um, they're represented and they can do this too. Yeah, and I think um, NASA and the world of space exploration, you know, from the human spaceflight side for sure has been, you know, over the years just so progressive in understanding how this diversity makes so is so important. And I love thinking about your four-year-old daughter um, <laughs> watching launch tonight and being excited about this. And I'm thankful to be here tonight with you two ladies kind of representing. <laughs> I'm super excited. Yeah. I have seen SpaceX launches before. I've seen shuttle launches before, but I've never been this close to the launch pad. Uh, and I'm just, my palms are sweaty with excitement. Yep. <laughs> and uh, it's going to be incredible. You know, night launch is here they just light up the sky. And so yeah. I'm super excited and I can't even imagine, you know, I, th I, I think a lot about Victor Glover this evening because as we said before, this is his first time going to space. He has thousands of hours as a test pilot, like a super impressive resume. Uh, mm -hmm. And this is his first time going to space. And I, I'm so excited for him to be part of this mission and, and get to go to the ISS after a long wait. Yeah, and that that is a beautiful destination. Let me just tell you that <laughs> they, you know, the four of them are going to, you know, do amazing work there. And it's been mentioned a couple times before, you know, this partnership that we have that's allowing us to do such incredible things that are just ultimately about improving life on Earth. Very Absolutely. Cool. And Nicole, I think it's worth mentioning. We didn't talk about this earlier, and I know you are a very humble person, and you're focused on the crew that's on the pad right now. But you are the last resident. International Space Station crew member to launch from and then land uh, on back on U.S. soil. So I think that's significant. Uh. Yeah, as a shuttle crew member, <laughs> and it's kind of you know weird to think that that was that long ago. But um, you know, I don't think any crew members go goes into it thinking about what you know what first or last it is. Yeah. But I'll tell you, having worked at Kennedy Space Center for ten years as a NASA engineer and to be able to you know support a mission like that and be here watching this tonight, really historic event. Um, this is the place where we learn, you know, that there is a solution to every challenging problem. And, and in the words of a person I mentioned earlier, Mr. Honeycutt, you know, here's how we can, not why we can't. And that's what we saw go on tonight as well. Absolutely. And with T minus 15 minutes, 10 seconds and counting to lift off, we want to focus in on the pad as we proceed through the final stretch of the countdown. We will turn it over to Hawthorne to take us through launch at 727 this evening, Eastern time. John. Thanks, Marie. As Marie mentioned, everything is looking good for launch of Falcon 9 and Dragon. It's going to come at 27 minutes and 17 seconds after the hour, just a little under 15 minutes from now. We began propellant loading on Falcon 9 on time at T minus 35 minutes. You may have heard earlier the call out, the fuel is completely loaded on the second stage. So the RP-1 kerosene fuel is complete. We also got the start right on time two minutes ago of liquid oxygen loading onto the second stage. Now on the first stage that you can see with the white uh, plumes coming off of it, fuel loading is continuing. We're about half complete with fuel load. That'll finish in eight minutes at T minus six. Now densified oxygen, the liquid oxygen, continues to load on the first stage. That'll come down and finish about T minus three minutes. And then as I mentioned, the second stage has just begun liquid oxygen loading just uh, two and a half minutes ago. That will continue all the way down to T minus two minutes. Now currently, eastern range is go. 
everything continues to look good. And the weather, as we said, has continued to cooperate. You can talk about it, you can't do much about it, but tonight it looks like all conditions are good on the weather. And finally, Dragon, the Dragon Mission Director and team, they are reporting no issues. They've completed the communication checkouts earlier in the countdown. You can see the crew access arm is retracted away. What you have left now is just the strong back alongside of Dragon you can see on your monitors. We have armed the launch escape system. The crew is strapped in and they are ready to go. Their next major event's coming up at T minus 10 minutes. They're gonna get final instructions uh, relayed to them. The crew displays will be configured for launch and that allows the crew to get insight into how launch is proceeding and provides constant updates on vehicle health to the crew that you can see on the right hand side of the monitor. The crew will also at that time close their visors in preparation for launch. Now at T minus five minutes we'll be in terminal count and Dragon will transition to its internal battery power. We'll hear continued callouts on the countdown net as we get close to zero and to lift off. But right now, 12 and a half minutes to go, everything looking good. Lee and I will be commenting, but we're gonna let you listen in to a lot of the discussion and just uh, enjoy the last 12 minutes of the countdown as we head for liftoff again, 27 minutes, 17 seconds after the hour. That's right, John. It's so exciting. I, only 12 minutes, 13 seconds until liftoff now. And just some things that you can look for, especially upon ascent. You'll be hearing some performance calls as we get into the final countdown and then after liftoff. These are SpaceX flight controllers. They're reporting the trajectory, the speed, the booster performance, and some of the key milestones for Falcon 9 and Crew Dragon on the way uphill. It's about a nine minute ride to orbit, and a few minutes after that is when we'll see Crew Dragon separate from the second stage and begin flying free on its own. Some of those other calls you'll hear upon liftoff are number and letter combinations. These mark different abort zones throughout the flight. The first two are 1A and 1B. This signifies they're in the first stage, and that will last until they're up to the very north of North Carolina. The next are 2A through 2E or 2 Echo. Those will come into play once the second stage kicks in. That lasts from the top of North Carolina all the way to the tip of Newfoundland in the Northern Atlantic. There's also a spot we want to avoid in the Northern Atlantic. And so you might hear the call Shannon or forward to Shannon. Of course, that's not to be confused with our crew member Shannon Walker today, but that actually refers to Shannon, Ireland. It means they would target off the coast of Ireland if they were later in that second stage and needed to abort. But that next call out we're listening for to the crew should come up at T minus 10 minutes that the crew displays those three panels in front of our astronauts will be configured for launch. Now just 10 minutes and 35 seconds to go until liftoff. Also, as John, I mentioned that stage two fuel load is complete. Stage one is at about 90%. Liquid oxygen load on the second stage is about 40%, and on the first stage, about 85%. Dragon, SpaceX, confirm crew displays are configured for launch. And SpaceX, this is Dragon. Displays are configured for launch. Copy resilience. We're honored to have you as our crew as we begin operational missions to the ISS. Have an amazing trip and know that we are all for one. Thanks, Jay. And to all the people at NASA and SpaceX, by working together through these difficult times, you've inspired the nation, the world, and in no small, small part, the, uh, the name of this incredible vehicle, Resilience. And now it's time for us to do our part, crew one for all. Up y'all, thanks Hopper. 
That was the voice of Commander Mike Hopkins confirming those crew displays are configured and that T minus 10 minutes was another check for the Falcon 9 launch commit criteria. It was checked by some computers. It was the last check of a wide variety of the Falcon system data to make sure we are go. From here on, we continue to count down until T minus seven minutes when the pre-valves open. T-minus 8 minutes, 30 seconds and counting. As Liam mentioned, the next major event at T-minus 7 minutes, we will open the pre-valves. Currently, the Merlin engines on the first stage are isolated by valves that are between the propellant tanks and with the Merlin engines. We'll open the pre-valves. That'll allow us to begin passing a small amount of liquid oxygen through the inlet of the turbo pumps. That'll chill them down to get them ready for when we bring the pumps up to full speed at T minus two seconds. We want to make sure that the pumps are chilled so that there's not any opportunity for the liquid oxygen to possibly get uh, in contact with a warm pump and turn into gas, something you want to avoid on a turbo pump. Seven minutes and 40 seconds now to lift off. We're still watching those fuel levels tick up and in the first stage, we're almost at 100% of that densified kerosene. As we mentioned, second stage is full. First stage fueling should be complete for that RP1 at about T minus six minutes. Standing by for pre-valve opening. Stage one engine chill has started. And there's the call out. Stage one engine chill has started. Indicates that we are opening the pre-valves. Liquid oxygen now beginning to flow slowly through the turbo pumps on the Merlin 1D first stage engines. Next call out should be in about 30 seconds from now. We'll be looking for stage one RP load complete. That's the densified kerosene, that fuel on the first stage, already full on the second stage, and we'll still be loading liquid oxygen up until about two minutes prior to liftoff on the second stage. Standing by for that fuel call. Stage one fuel load is complete. Okay, right on time. And a great view of Dragon. Sitting on top of the Falcon 9 as we're continuing to load liquid oxygen onto both the first and second stages. The RP-1 kerosene fuel is now completely loaded on both stage one and stage two. All continues to go well, just under six minutes to launch. In about 30 seconds, we'll enter terminal count. Dragon's onboard computers will take control of the vehicle. Both fuel on first and second stage is complete and liquid oxygen loading continues with the second stage at about 80%, first stage at 95%. Something else you might notice is water rushing the pad shortly before liftoff. That's to suppress the sound and keep any sound from imparting a load on Crew Dragon as it prepares to lift off. Dragon is in configure for terminal count. Dragon is on internal power. Falcon 9 propellant tanks are pressurizing for strong back retract. Good confirmation that Dragon is in on, in, on internal power. And now we'll be looking for a, ma a major milestone before we uh, launch today. That'll be the strong back retract. John, you want to tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, Leah, if we get a close-up of the uh, Dragon at second stage. Strongback is retracting. We've heard the call out, Strongback retracting. That's a two-step sequence. First, there are clamp arms around the very top of the second stage. You can see one of them just above the gaseous uh, oxygen vapors coming out of the second stage. Those arms will open up, and then in just inside of T-minus four minutes, once the arms are released, 
will begin to retract the strong back alongside the vehicle. It'll move back two degrees in position, and by about T minus three and a half minutes, we ought to be finished with that. The strong back will retract to 45 degrees away from the rocket once we hit T zero as part of the liftoff sequence. And at T minus three minutes, we'll Right now, we're waiting for the retract. And there you can see the strong back is beginning to move away from the vehicle. And it looks like we are just about into the required pre-launch position, just a couple degrees away from the Falcon 9 and the Dragon capsule. But right now, T minus three minutes, eight seconds, everything continues to be go on Dragon and Falcon 9. Currently standing. Dragon is in terminal count. And Dragon is in terminal count, and we are standing by to hear that stage one liquid oxygen loading is complete. Stage, two stage one lock load is complete. And there we have it, and stage two should finish shortly after at about two minutes prior to liftoff. So now the last major event is finished liquid oxygen loading on stage two. It wraps up at about T minus two minutes. Then at about T minus a minute and a half, we have to drain back and vent down the liquid line that goes up the strong back alongside the Falcon 9. If you see a large white cloud about midway down around the rocket, that's normal. That's again, just the gaseous oxygen hitting the warm, moist Florida air. Stage two lock load is complete. Dragon is in auto idle. And good calls that stage two liquid oxygen load is complete. That means we have full fuel on the first and second stages, that densified kerosene, and we're full of the Dragon oxidizer. Is starting. Liquid oxygen on the first and second stage as well. Now just a minute and 20 seconds until liftoff today. And as you can hear those sounds, like Soichi Noguchi said, the vehicle is alive. Coming up in 10 seconds, we'll look to hear that the Dragon is in countdown and Falcon 9 is in startup. Dragon is in countdown. FDS is armed, Falcon 9 is in startup and it's now controlling. 50 seconds now until liftoff. That FTS you heard is flight termination. Dragon, SpaceX, go for launch. SpaceX, this is resilient. Roger, go. Go for launch, and at 37 seconds, the International Space Station flying over Kennedy yeah, Space seconds. Center. All for one, crew one for all. Crew Dragon poised to go catch it. Twenty seconds till liftoff. T minus fifteen seconds. Okay, nine is configured for flight. N. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. And resilience rises. Not even gravity contains humanity when we explore as one for all. That's the word we want to hear. Stage one propulsion is nominal. That's 30 seconds into this historic mission flying crew on board Dragon and Falcon 9. Stage one is preparing to throttle down. This is in preparation for max Q, which is maximum aerodynamic pressure. Stage one, throttle down. There's that call out for throttle down. 
power and telemetry continued to be nominal for the vehicle, now traveling at 262 meters per second. Falcon 9 is supersonic. There's that call out, the Falcon 9 is supersonic, and we will be passing through Max Q here shortly, the largest structural load during ascent. Max Q. And there's that call out. That Falcon has passed through hey, Max Q. One Bravo. And we've Roger, just one entered. Bravo. Stage one Bravo aboard mode that's going to take them through the end of the first stage burning just before second stage activates off the coast of North Carolina. T plus one minute and 40 seconds into flight Dragon and Falcon 9 traveling 709 meters per second. Started. That call that MVAC chill is underway, the Merlin vacuum engine. Now with the call out of MVAC D chilling, similar to what we saw in the first stage Merlin engines, the second stage engine being prepared for its ignition coming up in just over 30 seconds from now. We're a half a minute away from three quick events in rapid succession. We're going to get main engine cut off. The nine Merlin engines will throttle down and then shut down. We're going to get stage separation. Stage one throttle down. And then ignition of the second stage engine. We've begun the throttle down in preparation for stage separation. And we have two alpha. Stage separation confirmed. And you see that stage separation has confirmed. There goes that MVAC engine. Stage two, crew one is now on their way to the International Space Station. On the right side of your screen, you see stage two continuing to burn. Over on the left-hand side is stage one preparing for its return to Earth. Now, currently on the left side, you can't make out much. Uh, it's a couple hours after sunset in Florida, but the grid fins have deployed on the first stage. The first stage is now unpowered, but with the velocity it had, it continues to coast up to an apogee before it begins to descend back into Earth's atmosphere. Now, as we watch, maybe we'll see the lights of Florida or the eastern seaboard in the background, but otherwise, there's not going to be much to see. On the right-hand side. Dragon, SpaceX, trajectory nominal. You can hear the call out. Trajectory is nominal. Bermuda. Nominal trajectory. And we've heard call out Bermuda. That means Bermuda ground station has the signals from the second stage of the Dragon and Falcon 9. We're still continuing as stage two burns to listen for those abort zones. We are now in 2A through 2E to Echo, taking us up over the northern Atlantic. Right now you can see the second stage engine glowing with this standard uh, red uh, that we have come to uh, see over all these missions. Indicates everything's looking good. Power on the MVAC-D engine continues to run at 220,000 pounds of thrust in the vacuum of outer space. Dragon SpaceX trajectory nominal. And trajectory nominal. Copy, nominal trajectory. And we hear the, the reply from the crew acknowledging we have a nominal trajectory. Dragon made it to the Falcon 9 second stage heading into the low Earth orbit where Dragon will then separate and begin its trip the rest of the way to the space station. We'll be looking for SECO, second stage engine cutoff, coming up at eight minutes and 48 seconds after launch today. So about three and a half minutes from now, Dragon and Falcon 9, second stage, currently flying 2,979 meters per second. Now currently the first stage has begun its descent. It is through Apogee. It's beginning to come back down where it, uh, Coming up in another couple of minutes, we will have the entry burn, where we begin to slow down the Dragon first stage. SpaceX trajectory nominal. 
Copy. Nominal trajectory. Another call out, another nominal trajectory. Just what we love to hear. That voice you're hearing on board Dragon, that's Commander Mike Hopkins speaking for our four person crew as they continue their journey. Now, six minutes and 12 seconds after liftoff. Trajectory still nominal. And Leah, you can see on the indicator altitude, 201 kilometers. Uh, we're now beginning to essentially level out and pick up velocity to get us into low Earth orbit. We're a little under one minute from the ignition for the entry burn on first stage. And we're about two minutes Dragon away. Dragon SpaceX, trajectory nominal. Copy, nominal trajectory. Great news, now seven minutes after launch, second stage engine continues to burn, everything looking good. And we'll see that continue to burn for another one minute in about 38 seconds. Right now on stage two, the crew's getting about uh, a little more than two and a half Gs of acceleration. First stage preparing to ignite for the stage entry Stage two FTSS saved. And we've got ignition of the entry burn, center engine, followed by the other two restart engines. First stage now getting ready to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. This is about a 29 second burn and it's designed to slow the vehicle way down. We're gonna shed about 70% of the velocity of that dropping first stage by the time this landing burn completes. I should say by the time the entry burn completes, which is now over. First stage on target for the drone ship in the Atlantic Ocean. Meanwhile, we're watching second stage getting close to getting into orbit. That's right, we've got about 30 stage seconds two, more. internal guidance. And now just about 20 seconds more of stage two continuing to burn until we see second stage engine cutoff or SECO. We'll coast for a few minutes afterward to allow the rates and motion to Roger there, Shannon. There's that call for Shannon. That's Shannon, Ireland, an abort zone, but it looks like we continue smoothly to orbit today. Impact shutdown. And we've got shutdown of the second stage engine on time. Dragon SpaceX, nominal orb insertion. Launch escape system is disarmed. And SpaceX copies. And Leah, the words we like to hear, a nominal orbit insertion. That's right, John, nominal orbit insertion. As we mentioned, stage two. Oh, looks like some action on stage one. And I believe we've had a touchdown on the drone ship. We've got stage one has touched down on the drone ship in the Atlantic Ocean. But now the more important news, second stage is in orbit right where we want, right on time. And we're getting ready for our next major activity, which will be Dragon spacecraft separation. <laughs> now currently on the second stage, we are essentially venting pressure, purging the engine out, making sure everything is quiet in preparation. Take a look, that's inside Crew Dragon right now. Our Crew One crew now coasting in low Earth orbit, still attached to that second stage. In just a couple of minutes, we should see that second stage separate and Crew Dragon will be flying free. Malia, the mission timer shows 90 seconds to Dragon separation. Currently, Dragon is flying at 27,000 kilometers an hour. And 
or T plus 11 minutes since liftoff today. Waiting on that second stage separation, but as you can see our astronauts from left to right, Shannon Walker, Victor Glover, Mike Hopkins, and Suichi Noguchi now on their way to the International Space Station. First trip to space for Victor Glover. Signal Newfoundland. And that call out acquisition of signal in Newfoundland. That means the Newfoundland ground station is now receiving telemetry from Dragon. This view inside Mission Control Hawthorne. Teams continuing to monitor the vehicle. Now traveling at almost 27,000 kilometers an hour. Ten seconds to Dragon separation. And separation confirmed. You can see that second stage departing. Crew Dragon leaving it behind. Separation confirmed. Now 12 minutes, 25 seconds into today's flight. Our next thing we'll be looking for is nose cone deploy. Our hooks will start to open on the nose cone and reveal those forward thrusters underneath. Thirteen minutes into today's mission, the view on the right-hand side of your screen coming from Crew Dragon. We had that short look at the second stage as it departed. That second stage will burn up upon re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. Dragon SpaceX, we see nominal service section Draco checkouts and the humidifier activation. And SpaceX, this is Dragon, we copy all and we see the same. Confirmation from teams on the ground and the crew. You can see them monitoring those three display panels, monitoring their journey to the International Space Station and where they are in the world right now, or over the world, I should say. Well, we're in 14 minutes, 25 seconds since it was a great liftoff. Everything happened. We had a normal, a normal insertion into low Earth orbit. You saw Dragon separate. We got the Draco checkouts were good. And right now we're hearing the nose cone hooks are opening up. Everything is happening right per the procedure. And we've got crew on successfully on orbit. So with that, Let's head over to our counterparts at Kennedy Space Center. Marie, how was that launch for you all there on the ground? Oh my gosh, John, it just, it <laughs> just took our breath away. I mean, we could just turn right around yeah. in our seats and watch. Uh, we got up uh, away from the desk to get a better look. And then we actually could see the booster uh, coming back down. Yeah, that was outstanding, outstanding. And I don't even know what to say. <laughs> high five. We're like high five and through the shield yeah, here. High five. <laughs> uh, my husband texted me a picture of my daughter watching liftoff. It was just I'm um, I'm emotional, um, just yeah. Uh, yeah, seeing that, and, and we and went on the first attempt. How often does that as happen it in US space flight? As it should. <laughs> very happy. Uh, you know, it has been a long day, but the just to be able to stand there and actually and feel the rocket pounding yes. the air around you was just. It was just incredible. And then looking at the light too long, I couldn't see the MVAC ignition. So <laughs> <laughs> I still have spots in my eyes. And then the views inside the, 
the capsule too with the four of them, you know, yeah. looking kind of mellow, but you can see Victor's kind of letting his arms do a little bit of the floaty yeah. thing. I bet he cannot wait yeah. to get out of his seat. Uh, well, he's, he's going to get a chance to yeah. here, here shortly. So he's officially on his way on his first space flight. So Incredible. Victor, Mike, Shannon, and Soichi are now on course to arrive at the International Space Station just tomorrow, Monday, November 16th, around 11 p.m. Eastern Time. And we're going to stay live on air for continuous live coverage along their entire ride to station. Uh, though our coverage here at Kennedy Space Center will conclude, uh, we're going to turn it over to the teams in Hawthorne and Houston to take us through the next phases of the Crew-1 mission, all the way through hatch opening and a welcome ceremony for the crew. Now, for those of you watching online uh, via YouTube, take a look at the description below the video. There you'll find the new link for our Crew-1 rendezvous phase, uh, and we'll be continuing live coverage at that new location shortly. But if you're watching on NASA TV, like my parents, uh, you won't <laughs> notice a thing and your coverage will continue. That's right. And as you follow along, uh, we also invite you to tune into a post-launch news conference at 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time right here on NASA TV, uh, where NASA and SpaceX will take questions live. And in addition to NASA TV, of course, you can always follow along on Twitter at, at NASA and NASA.gov for continuous mission updates. We thank you all so much for watching. Uh, to all of our commentators, Nicole, special thanks to you My for pleasure, being here. My pleasure, ladies. <laughs> Let's do it again. Oh, please, yes. <laughs> well, we'd love to have you back. Yeah. Um, here now are some highlights from the incredible journey that's just begun. Here's our first live look inside the suit up room. Crew Dragon Commander Mike Hopkins was born in Lebanon, Missouri. Pilot Victor Glover is a native of Pomona, California. And Mission Specialist Shannon Walker is from Houston, Texas. Mission Specialist Soichi Noguchi is from Yokohama, Kananagua, Japan. And here they come, walking down the hall. Oh. Everyone's Aww. looking quite peppy there. Yeah, so <laughs> cool. They're looking for people. They're looking for the people that have helped them all along the way, too, and want to make eye contact. Yeah. Here they come, the Crew-1 astronauts now beginning their journey to the launch pad ahead of this historic mission to the International Space Station. This is CORE on countdown 1 for timeline. The crew is departing for the pad on schedule. This is Chase Car, so you can be along with the crew every step of the way. It's kind of like the pre-flight, right? The walk around your vehicle before you get in and fly. I love this shot. Yeah. You know, when this was being designed, it was definitely a